keeping your phone away from your groin or as far from your groin as possible if you're a male who's wishing to conceive and maybe even a male who's wishing to maximize his testosterone levels because it does appear that radio frequency waves and the heat from the phone, so both of those factors independently and together, of course, can disrupt the Leydig cells of the testes and the production of testosterone and intertesticular testosterone is important for sperm production. Now, a topic that is sure to be a bit controversial, but it really shouldn't be because the data, at least to me, are very clear, is this issue of phone use and sperm quality. Now, this can open up a whole array of issues related to things like EMFs, and you've got people out there that have you know, ideas about 5G and all of this stuff. That is not what this discussion is about. The discussion I'm about to have with you relates to the fact that the electromagnetic fields and the heat-related effects of smartphones can indeed have a detrimental effect on sperm quality and yes, indeed, on testosterone levels as well. I'm gonna refer you to a paper. Uh, we will link it in the show note captions. The title of this paper is Effects of Mobile Phone Usage on Sperm Quality. No time-dependent relationship on usage, a systematic review and updated meta-analysis. This is a paper that came out in 2021 and talks about the fact that phones emit a radio frequency electromagnetic waves, which are called, called RF, radio frequency, EMWs, electromagnetic waves, at a low level between 80 and 2200 megahertz that can be absorbed by the human body. We know this, okay, this is not controversial and have potential adverse effects on brain, heart, endocrine system, and reproductive function. That has been established. Keep in mind, there is basically no controversy that radio frequency waves and EMFs can have a negative impact on biological tissues. The question is, how intense are those radio frequency waves and EMFs and how detrimental are those on those biological tissues, okay? It's a matter of degrees, but there is very little controversy as to whether or not they have an effect on biological tissues. And I'm aware of absolutely zero data showing that they can have a positive effect on biological tissues. Since what we're mainly talking about now are smartphones, we wanna separate out the heat effects of smartphones from the EMFs related to the fact that they are Wi-Fi smartphones or they're using cellular towers and Wi-Fi, one or the other a combination. Okay, so there are a number of different things in the phone that could be detrimental. We need to separate those out. Why? Well, because you might have heard that carrying your phone in your pocket can reduce your testosterone levels and sperm count. And guess what? That is true. The data contained within this meta-analysis and other meta-analyses clearly point out that it can reduce sperm count and maybe testosterone levels significantly, but certainly sperm count and motility significantly. It reduces sperm quality. So should you avoid putting your phone in your pocket? Your, certainly your front pocket, I would suggest yes, right? If you are somebody who is seeking to conceive. Right? I'm not somebody who is going to stop using my smartphone. I don't expect anyone's going to stop using their smartphone. The question is, should you carry it in your front pocket if you're a male? I think to be on the safe side, the answer is probably avoid doing that too much of the time. Ideally, don't do it at all. Then people will say, well, what if I turn off the Wi-Fi or I turn off the cellular access? Then is it still a problem? Well, it's a problem due to the heat-related effects. And then people say, well, I don't actually feel the heat of the phone. It doesn't get that warm. But the temperature effects of the phone, it turns out, are enough, even under conditions in which people don't report it to be uncomfortably warm, that it can change the temperature milieu of the testicle in ways that can diminish sperm quality. How much and how that relates to fertility and healthy pregnancy, not clear. But since we're talking about things to avoid, if your goal is to have a healthy fertilization in pregnancy, well then, by all means, just don't carry it in your front pocket. Then people say, well, what about back pocket or what about backpack? Look, it's very clear that avoiding being too close to the phone is probably better for your sperm quality than putting the phone very close to your testicles or anywhere else on your body. But it's also the reality that most people are going to carry a phone nowadays. All right, it's just the reality. I think almost, I think the current um, estimates, and it's discussed in this paper, that 90% of the human population has a smartphone, 90%, which is incredible. The adult population, of course, um, although a lot of kids have them as well. So this paper goes on to detail a number of different studies and outcomes from studies, but basically what they find, and here I'm paraphrasing, is that uh, the data indicate that sperm quality declines when people start using a mobile phone. So from the point they start using a mobile phone, regardless of the usage time, this is important. It used to be thought that it was four hours a day or more of holding your phone or having that phone 
close to your body was going to diminish sperm quality. It turns out that it's not related to usage time. That's even the title of the paper. It's just the fact that people are using mobile phones is reducing sperm count and quality. That's the reality. Is it entirely responsible for all the reductions in sperm quality and maybe even the reductions in testosterone levels that we're observing from decade to get, decade going forward? I doubt that's the case. Is it likely to be one of the major players? I've got my bet on the fact that it is based on the data that I've observed. And so if any of you would like to peruse the data in this meta-analysis, they're quite good. This study looked at 18 studies that include 4,280 samples. They were able to separate out the radio frequency versus the heat effects, and they were able to eliminate this time of usage um, variable that previously we thought if you were exposed to a lot of um, cell phone contact, that it was far worse than if you were exposed to a little bit. Turns out if you're exposed to any at all, you're going to diminish sperm quality. What does that mean? Does that mean that no matter what you do, if you own a, a smartphone, that you're going to diminish sperm quality? I think the short answer is yes, but that you can mitigate it. What might you do? Well, keeping your phone away from your groin or as far from your groin as possible if you're a male who's wishing to conceive and maybe even a male who's wishing to maximize his testosterone levels because it does appear that radio frequency waves and the heat from the phone, so both of those factors independently and together, of course, can disrupt the Leydig cells of the testes and the production of testosterone and intertesticular testosterone. It's important for sperm production. The exact biological variables leading to all these changes isn't exactly clear, but if you're like me, you say, okay, probably not a problem for most males to carry their phone, but probably best to not carry it in the front pocket, maybe even avoid carrying it in the back pocket as well.